I can see you. Oh, shit. We're making a keyboard tray. That's, that's what's happening. Like this. Click, click, click. So that's right humans, in this video we are gonna make a keyboard tray and finish out this desk project for the studio. So I've always been a proponent of keyboard trays. I've always liked sitting my chair like lower to the floor and being able to pull out the keyboard so I'm not always working in like raptor pose or maybe that's T-Rex pose. Whatever dinosaur pose that you would be working on with, you know, your arms up in the air, all tapty tapity. And plus the other thing with this desk, this pretty, 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 pretty desk is I don't want my keyboard on it. Again, like I mentioned in the last video, not because I don't think the desk can handle the wear and the tear of having a keyboard on it, but it's just too pretty. So I, I don't want the keyboard up there, you know? And plus it means I get to take another piece of really pretty walnut and fill it with super pretty epoxy to make a super pretty keyboard tray. Like, I'm, I don't see where I'm losing in this whole scenario, right? Yeah, you get it. So with the bark on the sides all taken care of for, I think for the most part, I think pretty much for all the parts, it was time to chop up this, this void, this bark, this inclusion. I think is what it's called in the woodworking world. Um, I don't really know why it's called an inclusion because I definitely want to exclude it from this project. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna dig this sucker out of here and just exclude it because we don't want it. It's not nice. It's very mean. It called me a name. It did, it did. I'm not gonna tell you what name it called me. You can guess in the comments, but it it was hurtful. So I had to chisel it out with a dull chisel, which might seem strange. It's kind of like, you know, digging out your heart with a spoon, but the dull chisel doesn't mark up the wood as much as a sharp chisel because it doesn't dig in. Yeah, yeah. See, there's like a point for my unsharp tools. Sharpen the head, dull in the tool. That's not a saying that should catch on. Let's, let's keep going here. So with my tuck taped board all clamped onto my tray, my tray, I forgot what I was doing for a second. I could dig around and unclog my cack. Ing. Um, so that I could then put it all over this wood. Moving on. I should probably clean this all up. Um, whew, starting with that sink. Does anyone else have like a shop sink or a basement sink that looks like this? I mean, it's it's kind of the best thing ever, but wow, does it need like a wipe down with a damp rag or something? That's atrocious. The good thing though is the total boat doesn't seem to mind. It seems to really enjoy having a nice, warm, hot bath. So steamy. So while the total boat was warming up in the bath, I uh, played with my cock again and just ran a nice thick bead all around this hole. I said what I said. I said it. I said it. You heard it. I said it. I said it and you heard it. Yeah, that's just the way this goes. But I think you like it or else you wouldn't still be here. Right? <laughs> right? So for everyone that's still with me, I am using Total Boat Thick Set Fathom uh, Deep Pour Epoxy for this uh, by Total Boat, the, the totality of boats. So I'm using this one because it does have a two inch, a one to two, one to two inch of pour depth that you can do. So definitely need the depth for this pour. So that's the good thing about this epoxy is it can do the deep pouring. The downside is it takes about seven to 10 days to cure, which really isn't that much of a downside. 
because it does cure crystal clear if I wasn't filling it with pigment, which, which I'm doing, as you can obviously see. Now the pigment I'm using is by Aurora Pigments. It is their Underworld Teal, and it is the most luxurious green I have ever seen, and I love it. But I do find it needs a little bit of a green dye to help it not be kind of translucent. And the unfortunate thing is I ran out of green dye from my Amazon dye kit, and this lime green wasn't gonna work. So I decided to go back to kindergarten and do some color theory, which meant I was going to mix yellow and blue to make my own green. Things are very high tech over here in the human made basement. Um, we just do what we gotta do and we get it done. about a week and it's time to finish this thing. So that's right, this resin is hard as a rock. Well, eh, maybe not. Maybe not quite like a rock, but definitely hard. Hard as I need it to be. Uh, almost as hard as getting this piece of plywood off the back. It's, it's proving difficult. But with all my strength mustered, I was, mustered? Why are we mustarding strength? Is this like, some trade secret by the people over at Dijon. I think there might be a conspiracy here, but we probably shouldn't talk about it because we don't want them to know that we know that we know that they know that we know and they know that we know, you know? So with that board off, you can see there's a couple little spots that didn't actually get filled with resin and that's okay. There's like a little air bubble, a little pocket of air and we'll fix that later. But first we're just gonna chisel off all this cack and uh, actually throw this guy over into the CNC and flatten her up. So there you can see, you can see those little air bubbles. So with them all blowing out and ready to go, I mixed up some Total Boat high performance epoxy this time and filled up those holes. Now the nice thing about the high performance is it cures in like five hours. So I usually leave it overnight and in the morning it's nice and hard. That's what she said. <laughs> and ready to go. Like a lot of things are first thing in the morning. Am I right? So with Herbert taking care of all my final sanding, I was then able to determine how big I actually wanted my keyboard tray to be. So with that all chopped down to size and looking good, the last thing I wanted to do was add in a finger groove on the underside. You know, somewhere that you could slide your fingers in and slowly pull out the keyboard tray. It's just logical to have one of those, right? So I programmed up a simple tool path for the CNC and using a little round over bit was able to make my groove all fingery or fl flip that around, make my fingers all groovy. So now it's time for everybody's favorite part, throwing on some finish and watching this wood really shine. So same as in the last video, I used Walrus Oil's Furniture Butter to finish off this keyboard tray. And I will say, it's been three months since I finished it to the time that I'm actually making this video and it's holding up pretty good. Not quite my favorite still, but it's still doing all right. Now the last thing to take care of is actually installing these brackets. So these are like specific keyboard tray brackets. Uh, I got them from Lee Valley Tools and they come in different sizes. So, you know, get the one that's right for your application and they're pretty simple. You mark some holes, you drill some screws and you mount it to the underside of your desk. The hardest thing about these brackets 
is it doesn't come with a helper. So if you're like me, then you get to lay on your back and look all weird and awkward as you're installing these brackets. Just so you know, helpers not included must provide your own assistance. So there it is, the keyboard of trays, the tray of keyboards. And unfortunately, my keyboard really, really sucks. So. It's a keyboard tray. How cool is that? So thanks for sticking around, checking out this video. Um, I did do a couple of things that I didn't show you about being like, I had some shelves and some sound panels and I didn't film it. So I'm sorry, but sometimes that's the way it goes. So I got one more video left in this whole room series saga. And then we're gonna move on to some really cool and exciting builds that I'm really excited to show you. But they've just hit the back burner for so long because I was working on this room and getting this whole situation all done and complete so that I could spend time here. Oh, shit. Uh, it's fine, it's fine. Uh, um, so I could spend some more time here doing the editing and getting all this content and videos and fun stuff out for you guys to watch. So thanks for sticking around, checking out this video. More to come very soon and catch you on the next one. Back to work. Ah!